good evening. I'd like to call the November 4th regularly scheduled select board meeting to order. Uh, with us tonight, to my far left, is uh, Joe Staub, Florence Smith, I'm Brad Town. To my right are Tour Nelson and Carla Weasel. With us also is Tom Badowski, our town zoning administrator. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, no. And any public comment? Hearing none. Um, ice rink solar project financing options and decisions on moving forward regarding scope and financing sources. So I, <clears throat> in front of you, you received the legal size paper. Uh, this has been developed by Ken Ling of the Vermont Bond Bank. Uh, we have been working pretty closely with the two professionals at the Bond Bank. They bring expertise and professionalism, which we just don't have in-house. In and so, uh, again, I would like to thank the Bond Bank for all their effort that they've been, been doing with us. So uh, we met with Ken today, um, some of the rec uh, committee was there, I was there, Tor and Carla was there, uh, and I'm saying I'm not an accountant, I'm not, you know, this is not my bailiwick, uh, I will go through this spreadsheet, spreadsheet and, and uh, uh, reiter reiterate as much of, of the information that I, that I can. So as you know, the, uh, the rec committee has been in the process of developing or redeveloping the uh, ice rink, uh, uh, the seasonal ice rink we have now, two, three months of, of ice. Um, uh, their vision was for a uh, four season recreational center. Um, and they uh, hired a DNK in engineers of Last November, the, the town went the vote and authorized seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for that project. In uh, uh, early January, we hired D and K, uh, and in March we hired Suncommon, D and K to do the civil engineering and Suncommon to do um, a, a solar piece. So, so this project will will uh, redevelop the rink put a canopy over it, and on top of that canopy will be solar panels to uh, generate electrical power. And I believe it's been about a month ago now that the select board had heard a presentation from, from Mike McCarthy from Sun Common. I thought there were some good questions there. They uh, answered a lot of things. And so this brings us to, to this, this point here. So I'm, I'm starting in the upper <coughs> left-hand corner of this spreadsheet. Uh, You'll see the uh, Berlin Ice Rink and Solar Canopy Project. It's, uh, this is a working illustrative debt financing model, and it's a draft. Uh, the, you can see the, the sources of, of dollars that uh, this performa anticipates. The first one, it's elective pay of roughly $425,000. That is a federal uh, earmark for solar projects. Uh, and it's based on 40% of the of the project, and it's um, uh, and the next one down is the energy uh, program loan. That is a, a program that has just been approved by the state legislature to help entice communities to develop solar projects in their communities. Uh, and third one is the a pulled loan program. The uh, uh, pulled loan program, and uh, uh, and that's the traditional bond bank funding that is, I, I'm not quite sure Berlin, not my tenure, has done anything for bond bank, but they lend from municipalities for many projects, uh, much like USDA does. So the, the, the elective pay, in effect, is, is a grant. The uh, energy program loan is uh, a loan at 2 and one eight percent and the pool loan program is 
uh, currently three and a half percent. And those percent, those percentage, uh, as Ken said, you know, may fluctuate. They tend not to fluctuate in great degrees, but they may bump up a, up or down an eighth of a point. Um, we anticipate probably uh, June of 2025, if we go the bond bank route, is when we would uh, 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 complete that finance. So the, so the next call on the top over's uses, you can see the base, which is the ice rink, is, is uh, 583,000. The solar, and that's just the solar panels itself, is uh, 478,000. And then the canopy is the structure that the panels will, will sit on. And you can see the, the two columns add up to roughly $1.6 million. Of, um, so the, the project in its entirety is a, is a little over $1.6 million, million. So I'm going to work my way now down this spreadsheet. If you have questions, just stop, raise your hand, uh, uh, please. And Can I grab one of those? I don't have any more. No, okay. Can, Jeff, uh, I've got Jeff has one. Can I just say for members of the public who weren't maybe not tracking this, it's not just as skating rink once the base is done. That's the intent is that it'll be used for outside courts of like basketball, pickleball, maybe tennis if we could fit it on there. Uh, but uh, a year round facility, not just a skating rink. Tom? Uh, those, are these numbers that include, the, are they the 20% contingency? Included in here? Yeah, correct. Yes. That's the entire budget that we've been working with the bond bank and so um the the dollars grant you receive that grant about 12 months to 18 months after you, you uh, built you, you built that so the first uh, set of financing it's titled current expense note debt service so that's taking out a short-term loan to to come up with the dollars for the four hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. So you can see um, it's roughly in, in interest uh, twenty-one thousand dollars over over the two years. The next home over is the energy efficiency program debt service. That's for the uh, that's a two and an eighth. Uh, and that's that special dollars that the state legislator ha legislation uh, legislators have approved, and um, uh, that's at two and an eighth. But it's only uh, the loan is only you have to pay it back in ten year period, and so that's a that's a uh, ten year uh, pay, pay uh, and you can see the the interest uh, uh, and the payback on that on the bottom is five hundred eighty nine thousand dollars then the third uh, line over pooled loan program debt service that's for the um, uh, for the canopy piece of it right and and uh, they can go to 30 years on their notes for for this type of project they perform this at 20 years and you could see the the the, the the debt service on paying back the canopy piece, a uh, little over a million dollars over uh, over 20 years. Next column over is the total debt service. You can you can see how on an annual basis and then collectively, what it uh, uh, at the end of the project is um, uh, one million six hundred and one like one point seven million dollars in, in total debt service payment. Can I just clarify yep. something? It's not just the canopy, it's the excess cost over the loan and over the energy loan and the because the canopy is five ninety one. So it's the excess over the re, the what I'm calling rebate and the energy loan. So it is a little bit more than the canopy. Alone. See what I mean? It's it's what you take this out and it's what's left. But that yes. these numbers yes. don't it's, match up. It's the seven hundred. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, up, yeah. Up the pool of yes. pool loan program. Yes. That's the numbers. Yes. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
And so you see the, the total debt service there, $1.7 million. And then the next column over is because this is a, a solar project, it's going to gen generate power. And, uh, if, and when you heard Mike McCarthy, he, uh, he said how rates are established. You do that when you get your uh, certificate of public good. It's, it's in perpetuity for, for that project. Uh, and, the, and it's roughly a 3% annual uh, es uh, escalator on energy production values. So you can see <clears throat> that the, during the, the 20 some years, it's going to uh, produce a little like $1.1 million in revenue. Um, and the next column over is, uh, is the uh, uh, solar operating costs of O&M. Mike, Mike McCarthy went into detail on what's involved uh, and, and that's, that's the upkeep of the solar panels and what that, <clears throat> what that cost is over this, this <coughs> excuse me, 20, uh, 20 year period. It's roughly $110,000. So uh, the, the next column to the right, annual project net cost benefit. So it's, it's taking the, 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 all the debt service, <coughs> subtracting out the <coughs> energy cost, adding back in O&M, and, uh, and on an annual basis, you'll see, you see what uh, the, the project is, is uh, uh, gonna cost on an annual basis. <clears throat> you see at the bottom, after you produce electricity, uh, uh, the, the, the net expense is uh, um, almost $700,000. Uh, and that's what the out-of-pocket expense is at, at the end of 20 years. And so if, if I'm going to just have you look back up at the upper left again. The total project value is $1.6 million. <clears throat> the town will end up paying, uh, say, seven hundred thousand dollars for a one point six million dollar project, um, and this performance stops there. Uh, but, and this is when the, the debt <coughs> is paid off, right after at this time, the solar will continue to produce. We believe it'll produce at least another ten years. Um, at, at about fifty thousand dollars a year, so you could uh, likely see uh, about uh, five hundred thousand dollars in, in revenue. Uh, there is some. Uh, you have to. We have not put in here the O and M for that extra uh, operating maintenance expense for that for that ten years. So it's a gross number of probably about uh, uh, five hundred thousand dollars, and you'd have to subtract out the O and M costs. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, so the last two columns is, is uh, Ken's thought of if you just did the rink, that's the annual debt service cost of just the base. Uh, his, he's calling the base the rink. And, um, uh, and you see the value uh, is 823000 If you add the solar piece to it, you can see it in, increases the, uh, 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 the, the value um, it's to $1.3 million. Uh, um, so the, what he's trying to, to show here is that adding solar brings value to, value to, the, to, the, to the project. Um, so um, I, I'll take Questions. Uh, the 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 what the the, the, the discussion is, was that um, uh, does the town need to go back to the constituency for uh, <clears throat> additional debt service over the seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars that they approved last November? And Ken said he's been uh, speaking to uh, 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 Berlin's bond council. And they, they believe this energy efficiency program debt service, that second column over there, would not have to, to go to uh, 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 constituency approval. It's, it's, 
it's a becomes an equipment lease. <clears throat> the bond bank would own the equipment, um, and then the town would agree to, to lease the equipment uh, back from them over a period of ten years. When it's when it's paid off, then the equipment would be owned by the by the town of Berlin. So the the there's a the, there's one or two pieces of that that bond council is trying to just. Uh, finalize with the bond council at, at the uh, Vermont Bond Bank, um, but the, what Ken said in the room, the way he believes the bond councils are leaning, is that <clears throat> that 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 debt can be incurred by the town without having to go to to the community for extra uh, for an extra vote, um, and and that was sort of what the rec committee was was trying to get to. Um, just uh, the environment with school budgets recently and, and uh, going back and uh, requesting more dollars um, uh, just didn't seem good timing and um, under this scenario um, it, it seems like the town would not have to do that but I, I'll gladly let any of these guys speak to the, to the ends of their concerns um, uh, and uh, I'll take questions or people at the meeting today if you want to, uh, if I didn't give it, it's uh, just due here, I would encourage you to maybe clarify some of the stuff that I, I said. So I think this wasn't explained well. So because I, I think this, the last two columns, the annual debt service, that, was, that would be just if we did the base. That would be what it would cost the, rink, the town. The rank, the rank, the, rank, the <coughs> whatever, the, where it would have all the activities. When you're at, the, the, if adding the solar, I think what it's trying to show is adding the solar and the income from the solar, it, that is going to generate $136,000. So it's, it's, it's actually going to be a plus. So... It's not. It's kind of paying for itself. Is is how I look at that. Because that's one and, point. That's one hundred thirty-six. Not one hundred thirty-six. And, and that and that's what. Right. Yes. And then that, what, that that's what, is, when I said that, a, a one point six million dollar project. Yes. Costs seven hundred thousand dollars. It's because we've added the yes. solar to it. And I did look at you know if it was ten percent less. If the generation of energy was 10% less, it still costs less. It would be 795000 where that 686 is. Um, and, I, and, and I did that just in my head because it's, I felt like the examples he gave us, some of them were, le gen were generating less than what they had projected, but I don't think any of them were less than 10% below what they projected. So I just was curious what the numbers would be if, um, if it didn't generate, you know, I just wanted to look at that 10% differential. Um, so that mean, that would mean that the net energy production column would be 983000 and then the annual project net cost benefit would go up to 795 Still, um, you know, less than sort of the base alone, um, what we would pay for that. So I don't know if that helps, makes it more confusing. <laughs> uh, but just, uh, just, just wanted to throw that out there for people that were concerned about, because I was concerned about the projections and how accurate they were. Um, and so you were saying the last column, the current one, 136.66.7, it is. That's adding the solar. That's piece to add, adding the it, solar. It's piece. essentially saying that because of the revenue that's coming in, because you see the initial years is when you're paying for the panels. Sure. So it's it's a negative, and then when you start generating, when you stop paying for the panels, the idea is your the amount your 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 return is increasing, and you're paying that back, and you're there's a small net of 136,000. Then again, the, the the panels don't cease to produce. After 20 years, right there, the, the Suncommon believes they're getting every bit of 
10 additional years out of it, if not more, as long as you do the preventative maintenance and uh, uh, it, uh, that's required. So <clears throat> again, I said the, the, you know, if, it, if it gets another 10 years and it's generating $50,000 a year, that's an additional $500,000 with no debt service, just operation and maintenance costs. Did, did Suncommon say how much the maintenance would be on those? That's, that's their numbers that's here. Okay. Under their O&M, the solar operating <clears throat> cost. For the first, the 110. <clears throat> and then the other one was the energy efficiency program debt service. We're going to have to go to the voters for that anyway, aren't we? According to what Ken, the, the professional from the bond bank who's been having conversations with the town of Berlin's bond council they believe you will not have to just I'm just I'm just saying that we'll have to go to the voters during our budget session yes yes yes, yes. 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 so there's two assumptions For, behind this one assumption is that the that the uh, elective pay, which is the essentially the one, what I'm saying, the rebate, four hundred twenty-five thousand, yeah. is actually forty percent, and that it covers both the solar panels and the canopy, which SunCommon does believe and has provided some documentation that they think it will. But that's an assumption, and the other assumption is that the the bond council will come back and say that voter approval is not needed they're still looking into it they have not come to that conclusion completely Correct. so any in my mind any vote is based on these assumptions coming to fruition <clears throat> well i must say you certainly muddied the waters for me <laughs> <laughs> So, with the with the advent of the uh, putting the panels on for um, for the solar power, you're expecting to get a a um, 1.6 or 1.7 million dollar system for uh, 700,000 700, or 800,000 yeah. somewhere in there. You could see the energy production value there, Brad is. One point one million dollars. Yeah. There's not a lot of capital programs in the municipality that don't cost the full nut. Right. That return. Yeah. <coughs> like the rec committee maybe to talk about their vision a little bit more I mean um, uh, sure uh, where should we go with this um, the uh, whew, uh, I mean just looking at these numbers we can see um, the base costs almost six hundred thousand dollars the canopy by itself would cost almost six hundred thousand dollars if we didn't put a solar system on it, we would still have to Excuse put me, a Jeff, roof on it. Yeah. Talk about the value of the project mm -hmm. outside of the numbers, sure. right? you know, to the community. Yeah, right? yeah. That, um, that, that's we're, that's we're what we're that, trying to do. Right? We'll go with that initial numbers is <clears throat> that's a that's a pretty big system. That's a pretty big amount of money that there is no return on if you just put a roof over it or you don't put a roof over it. Um, and we just have a base that we that is now exposed to um, ultraviolet radiation. Um, Paint, paint peels, um, all that, all the operating maintenance goes faster when it's exposed. Um, in addition to, it's just harder to maintain for people who are, you know, putting the ice on it in the winter time. Um, as a facility, um, you know, we live in a world where where kids, people. In particular, kids do not have the opportunity to get out the way that we did when we were kids. So, when we look at you know making our community great again, um, <laughs> the uh, we got to we got to look at um, we got to look at, at at that and say, 
you know, right now we have kids that, that look at, that spend all their time looking at screens, that, that stay inside, that don't get out um, unless they're, you know, unless they're, they're driven out. And it's, and it's a hard thing to say that they have a place to go and a place to do things. Right now, and I think I mentioned it in the last meeting, if you do want to go do something like this, you have to go to Berrytown, you have to go down to the city of Montpelier, you have to go depend on the facilities uh, that, that exist in other communities and you have to get in a car and you have to drive there. Um, for a kid to get there, um, it, it's, it's challenging and it makes it more challenging for parents to get them there when they have to leave our community to do it. Um, there was a time when we could ride our bikes around town and be kids and communicate with each other in person and um, we don't have those facilities now. Uh, what we would like to get to is have a place where we can do those things, where, um, where, where we can have kids that are growing up um, being physically fit, being mentally sound, um, and you know, it, that kind of thing pays off in the long run as an investment. Um, our volunteer fire company has trouble recruiting people has because people don't get out, because people don't come together. Um, I'm a soldier in the National Guard. We have a remarkably hard time recruiting people who are capable of doing the jobs that a soldier needs to do. Um, and I'm not saying I want all the kids from Berlin to grow up and be soldiers, but we want to give them that opportunity to be able to do that if they want to. Um, and they can't do that if they're not physically fit, if their brains aren't working the way they're supposed to work, um, and because they've spent all their time inside staring at a screen. Um, this is the kind of facility that we can start doing, that we can start getting those kids out, having people come together, having a place for adults, um, and, and to be able to um, engage as a community and be a stronger community, uh, not only with um, just coming together, but be physically fit. And, and mentally awake and morally straight and all those things that we like people to be in our community. Um, it's a great location because it's right by our police station so they get some overwatch, some coverage um, that our police officers have a chance to then engage with our community members right outside their front door. Um, it's a um, yeah, that, that, I think, am I missing anything, Tim or Tom? I think it's an economic development yeah. driver, right? You yeah. know, uh, you, you look at what the Northeast Kingdom has, has done with their, their uh, bike trails, it's, it's incredible uh, <clears throat> what has, over the last 15 years, uh, transpired. I, and I'm not saying that this rink will do that, but this rink could be a piece of that, right? It's a piece of the puzzle. Absolutely, yeah. a piece of the puzzle. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say, and Jeff, I know this is kind of unrelated, but I know the Recreation Committee has been doing a lot with over at the school now with programs, and I well, think that's good. Sports. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I think you've had good response, if I'm correct. Yeah, um, yeah some right. of our community members are yeah. here who are uh, members of the Youth Sports Committee. Um, but uh, but yeah, right now there's a basketball open gym going on in our gym. Um, Which is a new program. Right. We've never had anything mm -hmm. like that before. Um, my name is Ashley Lachance, by the way. I'm on the PTNA and I'm part of the Berlin Athletics Committee. Um, I'm very proud to say that our athletics programs are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a huge community response. Um, it's becoming more of a community program rather than a drop your kid off, um, something to do for an hour type of thing. Yeah. Um, everyone's becoming more involved. We're getting more volunteers than we have in the past. Um, 
we have gotten great feedback on support for our coaches, support for our parents, um, and I think it's just gonna get bigger and better and stronger. Um, Berlin isn't lacking community. What we're lacking is community space. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's something to be said about having pride in having your own space. Um, my kids are super active, they're in everything yeah. you can imagine, so we're driving to ice rinks, we're driving to parks, we're doing, and it would be really nice to have our own space, yeah. right? Um, we love the Northfield Labor Day Parade, we love all these celebrations that they have in town commons, and we'd love to see that here. Me too. Um, <laughs> A lot of our population is underserved, and I think that more community spaces will help that population and bring us all in and together. Um, yeah, I, I think, and, and you know what, with our taxes going up because of schools, right, let's make our town more appealing. Mm -hmm. Let's make it worth it. I don't mind paying higher taxes, if we have this great sense of community, maybe that will help bring new families in to the area. Yep. And maybe that will then increase and help our property values, right? right. Um, it's an investment in our future, it's an investment in our community, um, and I can't think of a better thing to spend money on than our kids. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you. I think that was well said. <laughs> <laughs> I just just quickly add. I'll try to be quick anyway. That uh, Berlin is is uh, really changed in the last decade or two, and you know we've we've purchased something like close to a thousand acres up on the mountain here. People walk around Berlin Pond. Um, we have active organizations: the Berlin Pond Watershed Association, the Conservation Commission, the Rec Commission. I meet people all the time. We have snow machine trails that, that go up the mountain. We have mountain bike trails. We have people are beginning to talk about Berlin as a place to go for recreation. They really are. The ice rink we, we, we've done. And I should add, somewhere I saw numbers that, <clears throat> if you can't quote me because I, I'm going to guess on this, but local towns have like 3% or 4% of their rec budget of, of their total budget is for recreation and Berlin was like 0.06% or something. We've done it, we've done all of this with volunteers yep. throughout the years and it's pretty remarkable when you start looking at all of Waterbury and Montpelier and uh, Northfield, bigger towns for sure, but, and I think um, the ice rink here done on a shoestring is kind of a backyard type operation, but People are coming all over central Vermont to skate there. I meet them all the time. I have to, to flood it. I have to kick them off. You know, it's like 10 o'clock at night. And I said, guys, it's, you know, it's 10, it's 10 degrees out. I've got to flood. You know, you guys got to leave pretty quickly. So it, and then they come it's, back it's, after he's done. It's, 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 <laughs> been, it's been very popular. And if the addition of of pickleball or tennis or basketball or whatever, additional summertime year-round recreation activity. Uh, it's just going to promote Berlin as a really nice, as an economic driver, a nice place to be, a nice place, place to, to go, a nice place to live. And so I think it's, a uh, few projects can be this comprehensive and yet have her somewhat of return, not just, not just a great place to go and live but actually economically it's got a little bit of return on it as well, which is kind of interesting. So I hope that's just a kind of a quick overall summary. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, Tom, how many, how many users do you think are uh, show up on a, in a week at the rink? Oh boy, you know the first year we had a log and uh, that, didn't, that didn't last long. No. <laughs> Um, it, 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 all, it all depends. Um, sometimes I'll go over there, it'll be, it'll be 10 degrees, cold as the dickens, and they're out there in shirt sleeves and it'll be, you know, this will be 8, 9 o'clock in the evening and there'll be 15 kids and they all seem to know each other or they, 
they've communicated together and all showed up. Um, some nights I'll go out there and there'll only be one or two skaters. Um, so it's really, it's really dependent. A, a nice Saturday that's warm and sun's out. Unfortunately, I can't always, the ice isn't always great. <coughs> now, but some of those I just continually through the day, there's um, you know, 10 or 15, 20 people out there skating. If it's windy and ugly out, maybe nobody. Well, the other thing is, um, if this is improved and the canopy's put up, uh, do you think there's going to be any uh, potential for increase? Or? I, I can't imagine it won't be increased. The ice is going to be better. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just going to be a better experience skating. And of course, I, I don't want to forget the, the year-round use of this, right. but just the ice part, uh, the skating part, I can't help but believe that it's going to be uh, far more popular. We get lots of people from our surrounding communities. Yeah. Instead of going to to, to um, Barry where they've got a Zamboni, you know, they have kind of a hard time getting that going. We, we always have ice three or four weeks, two, three, three, four weeks probably before they do. Kids, kids from all over Central Mark come. They come lots of times with Berlin residents, friends, and so forth, and same teams and stuff. But yeah, I can't imagine. It'll, but it should increase. Well, with 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 the uh, with the um, usage going up, and with the canopy over it, you're going to have longer hours. I would assume. What extended season? Yeah. Have you got any plans for any kind of supervision or? No, you know, originally we thought we're going to have to have, at the rink, we're going to have to have hours for the broom ball players and hours for the, for the, you know, the mothers that bring the kids. I don't mean to be sexist of mothers or fathers of the kids. And then the hockey players, and so we designed the thing, so you got a hockey rink and then you got a studio rink so you can separate those kinds of people. Um, whether you're going to have to now with increased usage, um, take a little more control over hours or who uses it or how long. And by the way, the lights, the existing lights are on timers. So I think we've, we've set them. You're not. I go over and turn those off. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's it's timer is timer. everybody else. Yeah. The, timer. The, 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 timer. the timer is supposed to go off, but then when I flood, I've got to go over and fiddle with the thing because I can't flood in the dark, you know, so I left to on, you know, <laughs> they just kick the kids off, but um, yeah, you're probably right, there probably will have to be some kind of rec committee control. Uh, we, we have a rec committee, we have a youth, youth, yeah. youth sports group already right. yeah. uh, for the infrastructure um, for it. Uh, yeah. They now have a, a way to collect monies and fees and it's, 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 it's great. And, there is this pickleball craze going on in our country as well. And mm -hmm. I bet I get two or three calls a week wanting to know when the pickleball courts are going to open. You know, and it's, it's just a great support for older folk. It, it is, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like, it's incredible. <clears throat> Tim Shea with the rec committee. I think, not to replicate, but I think the word that comes to mind is to make Berlin a destination. Um, and I think that's what we all want to do here in our community. And I think this is another significant part of doing that, um, is through recreation. It's through building community, it's through activities, and it's through accessibility. And I think this checks all those boxes. And it has a, you know, it's a, it's a 1.6 million is a, is a big price tag. But as we've said, there's very few capital projects where you're gonna see, you know, potentially a, a full return, if not a near, Whole, uh, you know, net net income or something on that project. So it is I think not to shoot the project. It's it's kind of also I see it, and I don't speak for myself here. I see it as pretty much an all or nothing, I guess, because it to put six hundred thousand dollars into a rink that's you know uncovered and stuff. I mean, we could get a, the same kind of hockey season, but it's not a long season. But it, it does become the canopy and the solar really is where the story kind of comes together. Um, so it does, you know, as a package, it's more appealing. It's not to say that we couldn't 
work through and, and do it in phases. Um, but knowing the you know where monies are and where monies aren't going to be, um, it seems like the time is right to try to strike and and take advantage of the the federal programs, the the uh, current use programs, as far as uh, the solar net net metering uh, of where we are there and, and such. So uh, I do feel like now is the time to, to really go in on this and, and figure out how to make it happen and, and make it uh, accessible to all of Central Vermont. Yeah. Well, let's get our, some of our money back from the federal government. <laughs> Questions? I pretty much asked mine. Thank you, Brad. So, what's the, what do you mean? Do we need to vote? That's this, this is the select board called this meeting. I don't, uh, uh, I, I think the, the, the rec committee would like uh, um, some indication that we're moving forward on this thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's kicking a can. Quite a while now. Uh, we're just about to go to hopefully early December. We're going to our site plan um, for the DRB. Uh, um, so the in in uh, December we're going to public uh, service board for certificate of public goods. So the permits are starting to line up now, and and uh, we anticipate wanting to bid the project in early. Uh, uh, January, mid-January for a, a spring constr uh, construction season. So it's not that long yeah. off. It's five to six months in, in, in this in a construction. It, that's it goes very quick. Actually, I, I think a, if the select board showed enthusiastic support for the project. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, would that would that would feel really good. Um, I know the only time we come to the select board is when we have problems, right? We got to fund it, or we got to do the and and you know some of the feelings that we have. It'd be nice to it'd be nice to hear from the board as well. I'm supportive. Well, I think this is a a nice idea. My my question is, and always been, how do we get to a year from now? We we've we've got some preliminary numbers. On, on a financing, but nothing set in stone yet, and we don't really know what kind of a voter approval we need. We've got the approval for the seven hundred seventy-five thousand. That's approval to borrow it. That's not approval to spend it. And we made that very clear fifty-two weeks ago from today when we were meeting in the same room, asking for the voters for their authority to borrow this. That you know, we're you know, you're not committing to this project. You're just giving us their authority to spend half the amount that this ended up going to be in that year now it's doubled in price or more than doubled in price and you know the, the common concern I've heard about the meeting this afternoon and tonight is how do we do this without having to go back to the voters I think we have to go back to the voters we're either going to have to you know at you know at least get the spending authority to spend 1.6 million dollars at town meeting or at a minimum get the additional um, borrowing authority um, because because the you know these new programs the the energy program loan the facts just aren't there yet it's, it's something brand new through the legislature the the intricacies haven't been filled out yet and who knows how long that's going to take I mean especially if we want to go you know to bid in, in January February they may not know that yet so we're going to have to have some type of a plan B in case that, that falls through or takes longer to get implemented than, than we're planning on. Because we're going to have to cut the check for this. The, the contractors aren't going to wait, you know, a year and a year and a half for $1.6 million. We as a town are going to have to cut the check. We just don't have the cash to do it right now. So I'll just say that I, which makes a very good point, I would be supportive of it if the bond, if it was, with, if those two assumptions were accurate. So if I knew that there was, a, you know, depending on the 40% rebate, mm -hmm. 
and the council saying this is, you know, legal opinion saying this is okay to do, um, I would, I would be okay with it. I don't, I'm, and I'm not saying Torwood, but I would say that I would be if, if, the, if we had that legal opinion. Well, I think that's all, that's all true, and, but I think my reading from just listening to the bond bank and the, yeah. that, yeah, they're saying maybe that 400,000 um, is a possibility. It's, no, it's not guaranteed, but it's 99% of the way there. They're just yes. not, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty confident, everybody that, uh, that I've heard talk about it. But they, they're in the business to, to lend money. They're they're just like the GMAC at, at the auto dealer. They're you know they're trying to they're trying to make the loan. They're trying to make the yeah. sale. You know we need to do our own due diligence as a board to make sure these numbers sure. add up and that we're we're doing everything that we're statutorily required for to make this happen. Yeah, and those, I think it's a great project. Steps. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I think this is a wonderful yeah. project, but. Yeah. It, 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 and, I'm, and I'm not looking out to 20 years or 30 years. I'm looking, how are we going to get this paid for in the next year? Mm -hmm. how, how are we going to get that $1.6 million? The rest, I think, is fine. Is, you know, yeah. that, yeah. that, to me, the numbers work out. And it would be great, you know, 20 years from now when I'm out there <laughs> ice skating and everything on. I want to be here when crap. you do that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get new uh, skate uh, <laughs> adapters on my legs. But... Um, <coughs> you know, uh, you know, one, one, you know, Mr. Collier was here. Well, he was on Zoom last meeting. I think he was at the meeting two meetings ago, and you know, asked some some tough questions about you know, and basically came down to if you build it, will they come? Type of thing, and, and I think and I think they will. And I, you know, I, uh, Dave Rulo from the uh, uh, Snowmobile Club was here. He is the I think the chair of the Barry Town oh, Rick Committee, yeah, if yeah, I remember. Yeah. And I know there's a basketball court, I just down from the uh, Rock of Ages factory, and you know I go by there once a week, and there's always people there. It's a little park, and basketball court, but you know I mean during during the there's always somebody there, and there's you know they're older teenagers or college students, and they have to drive there. And I think that's the same question that he was asking. Nobody's gonna walk to the ice rink in Berlin, and I'm thinking that's not what we're expecting. You know, we're, we're, you know, and that's not what's happening now, and Someday I think it's going to get used, and I think it's going to be greatly used, and I think there's plenty of opportunities to, you know, to maybe even get into some organized teams or leagues or um, pickleball yeah. competitions, <laughs> contests, what, you know, whatever the word I'm trying to think of. I, I think just great opportunity here. It's just, to me, how, how, do we, how do we get the money in place to, to do this. Yeah. And I don't even know if we need a vote to, tonight. I think we need the select board to say, go find it, and if it, if you find it, come back, and we will we will go with this project. But <clears throat> I, I, I mean that that's my take of this, right? It just you know gives us the the the, the wherewithal to. Want, want to go out and have these conversations because it's just been a desert with the select board on this, and I'm and we would not we just haven't been getting feedback, and and as as it it be it would be good to say here it's good to hear you to where you say that, and that's what the encouragement we need, and you, if you tell us to go continue and. Because we're going through the permitting, right? We've, we I don't understand what you're saying that it's been a desert. We've we've we've, you know, we've approved the Du Bois and Bing King contract. We've approved the Sun Common contract. We spent yep. tens of thousands of dollars yep. on this so far. I I don't see anywhere where you can say that this is a desert. Well, that's a difference of opinion then. So, um, uh, I, 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 again. Um, uh, Give us the charge, and we don't. We, we don't. I don't that didn't come here expecting a, a, okay. an up or down vote with you guys seeing this for, in a half hour. I mean, that would. That's just. That's yeah. just. With due respect to Tom, I, I don't consider the, the the board has been a desert on this either. But you've always been supportive of it. Here's here's I can tell the few times we've talked about it. I think what with due respect. I think, I think, I think, think takeaway. Sorry. Mm -hmm. but, but the, the good takeaway from Tom is, is if we get the money, 
we can build it. Is that is that a fair question? You know, like, hey, can we? It's give us give, give us yeah. Like what he was saying, give us the charge. Go find the money and and build it. That's kind of what we're looking for. If we don't find the money, can't do it. Can't do it. I mean that's. But yeah. And I th and t I think Tom I think what Tom might be thinking is we don't always like say oh yeah that's a great idea or oh yeah we're supportive of that because we don't do that when we're just discussing things right we do it when we vote so I think that's what you're thinking right I don't know um, go ahead Joe sure I'll take the opportunity to say that this I think is a great great idea mm -hmm. um, I could be very supportive with it um, I think coming back going back to the, the voters that if we needed to um, come up with that other seven hundred whatever thousand dollars. I couldn't. I couldn't feel good about making that call tonight. Not my call. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a it's a great great opportunity for the town of Berlin, um, and, and I could be very supportive of the program for the project. Thank you, Paul. Well, I'm certain that the passion and the want is there, and I think it would be fantastic for Berlin, hands down. I also, like Joe, and uh, what has been said by Tour, would want it to go in front of our constituents. Um, I think it's wonderful that Ken came forward and said that he believes we would not need constituency approval, but I'm firm that we should, and I think that goes a long way. I also really think with that passion and enthusiasm and wherewithal that I have no doubt if we approve this that you will find the money. So I am, what, I am well, in support I, of this. Well, and what's I, the, and I what's just, the cutoff? Mm -hmm. Like when, when, like if we can come back and say to you, no, here we've, we've found, we found grant money, we found whatever else that we don't need to go back to the voters and ask them like we've got everything's under seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for or cost to the town. What's your what's your cutoff for that? For having to go back to the voters, March is that? You know, oh, it's that a probably meeting? middle of January mm -hmm. to be on the March ballot. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Now, are you, are you thinking that would it's a budget item to be voting in the budget? I think it's going to have to be a separate article. A separate article. I mean, I mean, we, our, our budget is four point five million dollars. To throw, to throw in another one point six million, on top of the potential fire department, mm -hmm. you know, we just almost doubled our budget for that. So I think it's going to have to be a separate article. Mm -hmm. Well, near as I can tell, the I think the money and things are falling into place pretty, pretty quickly, as I understand it. There might be a cash flow problem in the first year or two. It sounds like it's a cash flow problem more than a, you know, a net, I don't know, I may be wrong because Tom, you know more about this than I do. But I think, but I think the, the money, the grants, the loans, the, you know, there are even some things that are, you know, if USDA is a five-year, um, Five year, uh, the debt service is only for five year in the energy, USDA energy efficiency program. And they're, the farm bill is like two years late, as I understand it. And yeah. if, uh, and as part of the farm bill, they may extend that to, to um, 20 years, which makes, changes this chart. So there's a lot of, I think, a lot of little things that are still as we as we were working on the project, uh, come up that might um, that might change things a little one way or another as well. So, just to... anything else on this? Would um, anybody like to make a motion to encourage the search for the fund? <laughs> Do we need a motion I don't for that? think we need a motion. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe the motion would be needed, but I'm in support of the locating the funds so that we can move forward. And what I hear tonight is a lot of enthusiasm and willingness for folks to move forward. With this yeah, project. I think it's just like Tor said, it's more of the cash flow and the. How do we get to the next year? Yeah, right. and and it is true. I mean, I admit that I have concerns about putting it forward 
without voter approval. I just, I do, I do, but I think if it's a, if you're, it's sort of like you're paying for the equipment, they're holding the asset. So to yeah. me it's, but they, the bond bank would have to come back on that, or the bond council. attorney would bond have to come council. back on that. But I think tourist concerns are valid about the upfront spending, so we need to get through that. But I'm, and I we, need, and we need to be open on this process and, and yeah. transparent to the public. There's already been concerns that some documents have been shared, that some people are upset that they've been shared with the public, which, which there are no secrets when it comes to this. Those, those concerns are severely out of place. So. But the, good job. <laughs> Keep going. And good job with the rec recreation activities. I get to design the uniform. <laughs> Thank you all so much and for Thank explaining you. it all so well. Much appreciated. Real quick, I'd just like to say um, thank you to all of you for your support um, to start the program. Um, because of our support from Berlin Elementary and from the town, we're able to keep our programs at zero cost to all children. Oh, good. Which That's is amazing, um, and no one else in the area does that. Great. Well, good thank job. You, thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Moving on to the grants management consultant. Yes. Oh, oh, well, 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 RFQ for Grant Management Consultant and a proposal by I Parametrics and a proposed uh, contract. Um, jump in Tom anytime. But this is for the so the three grants: the uh, Newtown Center Infrastructure Grant, which is a Community block grant, am I saying that? CDBG. Right? Yep. And the two congressional direct spending. Direct spending. Um, they come with a lot of overhead strings, I guess you'd call it. Uh, reporting and applications and things like that. So uh, we went out to an RFQ. Uh, we received, was it five or six responses five. back yeah. Tom? Five. Uh, Tom and Shelly actually uh, got her involved. Uh, the assistant treasurer reviewed them all, uh, did some interviews, and they're recommending contract with high parametrics. They come, uh, well, I'm, I'm not stepping on your toes here, Tom, but they come with great, uh, vast experience uh, dealing with these grants and everything. And so there's, in, uh, uh, we have a, the town has a, a half a million dollar grant in the new town center to uh, redevelop and relocate what's commonly known as the Berlin Mall Road. Um, and that's uh, federal dollars. And with federal dollars, you have to make sure uh, that the, the project adheres to the bidding and procurement uh, process of, uh, that's associated with federal dollars. Uh, we have lost, in, uh, when Diane retired, all of Berlin's historical knowledge to that end. And we have a very junior accounting staff now. Um, I'm not gonna pretend to, 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 to be able to do it. Uh, and we were just feeling a little uh, overwhelmed as staff uh, and we discovered there are companies out here that help municipalities manage these. And so we had that $500,000 grant at the uh, New Town Center, an additional $200,000 there for water and wastewater lines and uh, storm water. So, the, the, so that's two grants there. We have an um, $850,000 grant, uh, 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 congressional uh, direct spending um, to replace our uh, uh, 1980 uh, pump station down there. I believe some of you have visited at that pump station. You know, it's, uh, you take a single man elevator 35 feet underneath the ground and uh, uh, it's not a very uh, welcoming and conducive place to put human beings in there. And we really need to re replace that system, bring the pump system up to the surface, and 
and avoid the risk of our, our of our employees going into a hazard area. So that that's one. And we also received a, a congressional uh, congressional directing spending of 1.6 million dollars for developing the multi-use pass in and around uh, the, the new town center. So. Um, I, I parametrics, as Tor said, was one of five that um, uh, re responded. We interviewed uh, folks, um, uh, came up with a recommendation uh, to the board to to um, award the contracts with them. And, and these dollars are paid for from from the assets of those grants. It's not town treasury or, or anything like that. It's they are paid for by these by these. These, these these grants. Um, we did meet last week the, the state uh, regulators who who are doing the um, uh, redevelopment relocation of the Berlin Mall Road. Wanted to meet the uh, the folks. Um, uh, they have uh, the state maintains a list of in-state consultants. I think we sent those. To, there was 30 of them in-state. Not one responded, and so. Um, uh, uh, they were the state was concerned by that and seeing that that they may be getting more um, out of state uh, 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 contractors uh, bidding this and they wanted to kick the tires on some of these folks as well. The meeting went really well. Uh, the developer was there, the state was there, uh, iParametrics was there, and, and town staff was there, and and uh, <clears throat> we, uh, everybody came out of that. And just shared the, our texts or emails that it was uh, 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 well received, and we've 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 got some professional people behind us that could help help Berlin. And one of the things we want that we we baked into the RFQ was was is managing this, but we want we want the, this consultant to mentor our accounting staff. And so the next time we do something like this, we don't need to hire I Parametrics. We take those dollars and pay our staff that. And, uh, and, and I Parametrics was very agreeable to that idea. Um, and um, so that's where we're at, at, at with this. And, uh, I encourage the board to act favorably on, on the selection of I Parametrics. Yeah, like Tom mentioned, the. Uh Expenses with this will be charged back to the grant, so I'll be out of any town actual money. Uh, with that, I will make the motion to approve the agreement for grant management consulting services with I uh, pair, <coughs> excuse me, parametrics. I second that motion by Tour Nelson. Any further discussion? Tour. And, author, and, and authorize me to sign. Yeah. The only thing I noticed is it's, the controlling law is Georgia. Is that, can we change that to Vermont? You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're a Georgia they, corporation. They, they do it in Vermont, the state they work in, but mm -hmm. that would be my only question okay. for them. Subject to that question. Okay. That's. Do we have the amount, uh, Tom? Uh, uh, the proposed okay. contract it's in amounts? The, 30, 30, 20. Right? 30, 30, 20, I'm trying to remember. Like no, they gave it a separate, a separate thing to her. I don't think it was. I was going to say, I didn't see it in the contract. Uh, not to exceed numbers, I think it was 30, 30, 20. I, I, I think those numbers are right. Uh, oh, which ones? 30, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think they sent it to us in an email Separate. after okay. the fact. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Tom. Traffic ordinance. Well, actually, if Mr. Lyon is here, I'm sure for the vacant building ordinance. Uh, if you don't mind. Nope, not at all. Take this out of order, unless, unless he wants to sit around. Well, I'm, in, I'm enjoying the show here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can do the vac vacant building and you can stay late. <laughs> so this is something that's been, you know, discussed for, uh, for a while, no actions taken, at, and we're not even anywhere close, and I, and I want to say this especially for you, Mr. Lane, we're not anywhere close to being able to take action on this, um, but, I, but I know you have some specific concerns about this, and I would like to get those out 
in the air that we can look to incorporate those into the, you know, to the draft as we're working on this. Um, and, and I think when though, I think, you'll correct me when I'm wrong, but um, I, I think we, you know, we need to look at what the scope is on this. Um, and, and a lot of people fall upon hard times and uh, you know, and we've all seen it with the flooding, you know, in the, in the past year, and buildings get damaged, and it's you know, beyond the the owner's control, and a lot of times they're dealing with insurance and FEMA and other things, and that's kind of outside of what I am envisioning this ordinance for. It's not for those types of situations, uh, Joe. Yeah, I, I think. When I, when we first started talking about this, I, I envisioned something, uh, I think, very different than what might be brought up. Is is like the town residence with the shed or the barn or the whatever, you know, that type of thing, uh, for for building a vacant building. I, I was looking more on the commercial side. Correct. Um, so, but I I could see where this right here could could maybe. You know, a stink could be raised by the residents about my woodshed or my barn or the what, whatever building that might be on their property, which really wasn't my intent. So, yeah. did, you think, did you want yeah, to jump in with your concerns? Just a, uh, I had some recent experience over the last three years helping a resident that had pretty severe health problems, financial problems, and everything else. And it just struck me as we're a ruler, or, or I read this, all I could picture is handling, handling that to the resident and say, here's what the cat town wants to do. After he spent literally three years suffering through the whole process trying to get through this. Uh, so, so one of the things that it just struck me as we're still a rural town, we're growing and we're, you know, one of the things that we talk about community and always in, the, in Berlin, always have had a chance to talk to the select board if we had an issue or talk to the, the planning commission or, you know, it's been a community that talks to each other about things and helps each other. This just struck me as Welcome to Burlington or New York, New Jersey. You know, it's it's a very regulatory, hard approach to management of uh, abandoned or, or buildings. But lots of the efforts, lots of the things you already have power over as a select board, if this comes up as a true safety or hazardous issue uh, under the state law, so you are not we as a resident are not. A loss of protection, protect the town people. Uh, I think that uh, when I went through this, it was some of the things that talked about things that, that concerned me is this last, um, you know, we have lots of people that have financial issues, of some older people, some really working class families, uh, people that really don't need lots of more problems, and some of my written in the town and you can see people that are working on their houses that would be considered as substandard and maybe even unsafe under this regulation because they aren't quite there yet. You know, they got the house half built, the steps aren't right, the, the access isn't right, the driveway isn't right. Uh, it's, so if I read through it, it's, and then there's the people that, that have um, families that and members of their family have passed away that are trying to get through a process, a legal process, or a, a state process. So lots of people that really just didn't fit Berlin, I didn't think it. it uh, I went back and looked at some of the other, uh, some of the other laws that, on the web, and the webs are great, you know, you, what other people are doing. And there are some towns that are doing instead of six pages that are 80 percent talking about fines and people coming to your house and putting up signs and giving you 30 days and stuff like that, that talk about working through uh, these issues with the local authorities. And that, 
I thought that's the type of thing that um, if we can look at this and say, how do you, if we need to do something like this, is the first question, is the town really in a position now that we, does any burning need to do this at this point? Um, and if it is, then is there some way we can do it more of getting back to a Berlin solution where you talk about what some of these other towns have done. Back off a little bit in the aggressive, you know, the aggressive uh, kind of hard line ordinance approach or ordinance of regulatory approach and see if we can look at something that firmly looks at an assistance process first and would say, okay, what is happening here? You know, get the facts instead of sending out an inspector. Yeah. Say, here's what we have as a concern as a town. What is happening? Um, and, you know, I ask them to come in and explain. People would do that. Um, and then look at some of the things that I ran into is, you know, the death of a, a relative, a, a mother, um, a resident, took almost two years through the, without a, uh, through a uh, process with the courts because there's no will. Yeah. And during that uh, two years, I worked with him because he couldn't get a lawyer, even legal aid, quite honestly. They weren't interested in working that hard. Uh, didn't have the people at the time. But looking at some process, uh, yeah, you know, the, the town was foreclosing on the uh, foreclosing, put it up on tax sale because his mother hadn't paid the taxes. So we got that paid up by loans and sought personal loans because banks don't want anything to do with something that's you know, a state. They just, yeah. you know, let the town take it. And of course, that was that's the type of thing we don't want. This is a this, family that's been in the town 60 years. He's been in the town 45 years. He's born here, actually, longer than that. He's 60 years. So how do we help him get through that as opposed to putting another regulatory step in? Um, and he had tried financing. We finally got lots of personal loans to pay off, almost $10,000 in taxes to keep the foreclosure from the town. And then looking at the um, Towards the end of the, the state, the state came in at the last minute and put a, a six-figure claim against the estate that isn't worth much more than fifty or sixty thousand max, and so, so that took a year to resolve. And all during this time, if we had this process going, it would have been almost impossible to meet this process without having another serious issue in uh, having somebody come in and try to take this day. So, <clears throat> so I think, you know, looking at something that is more responsive to the needs of our people, the needs of our residents, if there's a commercial developer that says, gee, I'm just not going to do it, yeah, we should have some code in there that says, you know, a residence has different treatment. The state is still being worked on aggressively to resolve and fix the problem as got a different treatment uh, before it goes to this safety officer coming around and, and writing up a report on your property. Uh, taking into account some of the schedules and some of the hardships people are going through, uh, some severe sickness in that particular case, uh, people literally losing lights and having strokes and stuff like that, send them back. So all those things really should be taken into account. And then is there some way we can work with that individual as a town to say, okay, let's let's see what we can do to be sure that we don't feel this is an unsafe condition. How can we make it happen? And you know, maybe the, some of the solution is uh, some of the residents neighbors get involved and help out or something and we sit down with the town and work something out. Um, but certainly it, an opportunity to address this as more of a resident friendly approach to 
for people that have troubles, whether it be a flood or whether it be uh, sickness or estate problems or death in the family or you know all those things. So, so I know you're early in the draft, and I appreciate you saying that. And just when I saw it, it kind of came as a point that. Uh, Gee, are we going to do something like this as the town of Berlin? Do we really want to be doing six pages of, I guess, regulatory approaches to people with problems? Um, Ron, do you have example? Do you have any recommendations as to what towns to look at? Or? Yeah, and in fact, there's uh, I've got it on my web, but it's uh, it's several. Town. Some of them, I think there's a standard that Vermont just seems to be accepting in some towns. But you, that's almost what we have here. Yeah, I think it's St. Albans and it's whatever the name was on this yeah. thing. And then there's some of the, um, some of the other towns in the state are saying, I've talked to three towns and they say, we really don't want to get into that. You know, talking about coming onto personal property, getting involved in difficulties yeah. if it's a issue, we would prefer to just address some issues that happen. Well, as an insurance regulator, I can tell you that insurance companies will often take care of those situations for you. <laughs> uh, you will either have to, you know, repair them or you no longer can reinsure them. Yes. So um, that's often, often how these things get resolved, I think. That may be better at that stage than the town regulatory process to, yeah. to go through this six pages. Uh, there are, to answer your question though, Carl, it's, uh, there are several examples on a national level and New England level and a national level about <laughs> different towns have taken different approaches, uh, rural towns, towns that have uh, small towns versus larger towns versus cities. Uh, so I did have some different wording and I didn't, didn't come in with any of that. Oh, that's all right. You can send thoughts. it to. I mean, if you want to send it to me, I'll take a look at it. I could, I could yeah. try to warp a tour. I'd be happy to do that, especially if we have. I think it'd be great if we have the time to work through this, so it isn't something that's put in place. It has to. Yeah. Not. Yeah. I mean, I have no time frame that I'm looking. At. You know, it's not like I want to have this done in 90 days or six months or whatever. You know, it's just. I want to keep it on our radar screens, and I want to do it right. Yeah. You know when we do it, but take the time to do it right. So um, I'm not trying to push this through or anything. I get it. Yeah. You know, and I think there's plenty of opportunities to to work on some of this language and the scope, especially of the, uh, of the proposal. And you know, I know it's titled <laughs> "Dangerous and Vacant Buildings." Um, that's kind of broad in and of itself right there that yeah. yep. I think, you know, from the fire chief, I think you'd want to kind of narrow it down as well. Well, if you have anything you want to share, feel free to share yeah. it with me by email. I think you have my email. That'd be uh, great, and I'd be happy to put some thoughts on paper about some yeah. of the things that I've seen that could, could maybe be done yeah. and achieve the same results in some ways without causing hardships and you mentioned some of the things that about the floods we've had lots of people that are really in tough shape in the town quite honestly yeah. and they moved into places that aren't particularly compliant and they moved out of places that aren't compliant and renters have said we can't rent because so, so those are some things I'd be happy to just say here's some of the things I've observed and thought about and we'll see if we can help make the work for the town. And be great. Appreciate so, your input. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, so, Joe, if I may ask, what are some of the things that you see as fire chief that keep you up at night that we can address? <laughs> fire, as fire chief. As fire chief, <laughs> that we can address in an audience uh -uh. like this. And if you want to take some time to think about it, that's fine too. But yeah, I mean, I, I would I would like for this to address a problem, and maybe we find yeah, that there's not no problem, problem. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't want this to be a solution in search of a problem, which so much of what comes out of the state legislature is doing yes. just that. 
you know, and, and maybe we we'll, maybe we we'll come up and say, well, there's not really a problem there that needs to be addressed. So I'd kind of, I'd kind of like to look to you, Joe, and, and maybe the police department, you know, I guess maybe develop a problem statement first. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a statement, but identify the problem before yeah. you go and try to fix it. Good thought. Anything else on this? Close that. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thanks for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. You did a fine job of explaining yourself so that we could understand your thoughts and you appreciate it. Traffic will be the next. We'll enlist you for assistance. Like Thank you. Like you used to help us on the planning commission. That's scary. Take care. Thank you, Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, traffic ordinance. So this one is much further along, ready for adoption. Not not ready yet tonight. Um, I'd like to go through it section by section. The very top, section one, well, all of the section numbers, um, I would like to be uniform with the uh, Roman numeral. So, um, you know, section one, two, two, section three, et cetera. Yep. Um, another big one was section five versus section B. So make those uniform throughout the document. Um, the next one is on the next page for speed limits. Um, Dog River Road is not properly spelled out, it's, so it should be Dog River Road instead of Dog Road. Um, here again on the next page, Partridge Farm Road is not Partridge Road anymore, Partridge Farm Road. Um, Adding in the speed limit for the newly adopted Dodge Farm Road on Highway 83 as 25 miles an hour. Uh, that's it for the speed limit changes. Um, now there was concern about dropping Comstock. which is Town Highway 14 from 40 to 35. That is Lalo. What is the board's? George, do you have a copy of this? I'm missing, Sorry. I'm missing roads. I only have I'm not seeing Comstock on here. Um, uh, they're not from both sides? No. Uh, no. Okay. no, that's why. That's I was wondering wrong. why certain roads weren't on here. <laughs> We had more than that. It's like Comstock. Mm. I know that road. But where is it? Here. <laughs> yeah, we only have the one side. Okay. Uh, I think it's currently in there is 40, and there was talk last time about dropping to 35. That makes sense. Which road is that? Comstock. Comstock? That is Comstock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I would say yes, definitely. Uh, under stop signs. Um, adding in the stop sign from Dodge Farm Road entering Scott Hill Road. Yeah. Can I ask you a question problem? on speed limits? Uh -huh. how, how do we determine? Is it just the town or do we have guidelines of determining speed limits? We can, on unpaved roads, go between 35 and 50. Uh, other than that, you need to start looking at the characteristic of the road and getting into speed surveys and... I think like an that. unmarked dirt road is actually 40. An unmarked paved road is 50. I don't think you go 50 on a dirt road. I think our authority allows it. Okay. But, you know, but we also say in there, it may not be on the page that you have, that any road that's not listed, you know, specifically in the ordinance, Uh, I think you may have this page. All town highways maintain an open to the 
circulation of motor vehicle traffic not listed in this, the above, posted ordinance shall remain at a posted speed limit of 35 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Getting to parking where some of the more issues are coming in. Um, we are seeing more and more of an issue of people parking on the travel portion of the roads, uh, including Chandler Road on the hill, uh, there by the farm, uh, workers and customers just parking on the road, uh, Goodnow Road by the um, auto dealership now, they're parking on the road. Um, and parking really close to the intersection. Currently, and you don't have this section either, uh, the current restriction is parking within 15 feet of an intersection. Uh, the road superintendent would like that to be uh, expanded to 50 feet. Oh, and also on stop signs going back uh, with that car dealership I a copy of this. Uh, when the DRB approved the zoning permit for the auto dealership, the, uh, oh, this is, uh, the new uh, Mazda Volkswagen, uh, put on a permit that the applicant uh, will place a stop sign on Goodnow Road, entering Marvin Road. Um, of course, that was not coordinated with the select board, which it's the select board authority to make that decision. Um, but that stop sign is not in place yet. Um, so I think it's, you know, something the select board needs to decide if we want, in fact, want that select board, that, yeah. board, geez, that stop sign <laughs> to be, I'll be glad when tomorrow's over. Um, <laughs> wow. Do we want to stop sign there? In which case, we would need to add it into the uh, to the ordinance, or not? In which case, I don't know what we do. But uh, and then there was talk about increasing some of the fines. Um, so something to think about. Uh, a couple couple items we do need to take action on. Uh, before we move forward, and I'll send the full right. version out to everybody before our next meeting. And then we'll consider them, you know, starting the clock for the public hearings and, and things like that. Okay. Anything else on this door? Uh, no. Uh, let's see here. Warrants? I have that in front of me. I make the motion this evening um, to approve payroll warrant 25-09 for payroll from October 20th, 2024 to November 2nd, 2024 to be paid on November 6th, 2024 in the amount of $66,400.99. Payable warrant 25-G9 with check number 24396 to 24448 in the amount of $207,399.28, and the ACH building renovation loan in the amount of $10,000 even, and the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department selections orders for both July and August. Your second. Joe, you second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I'd like just also, uh, Chief, we're still missing several other select board orders. I think like April, May, and June we haven't received yet. Okay. Okay. Um, Minutes. We have two sets. We have October seventh, seventh, and twenty-first.
I make the motion to approve Monday, October 7th, 2024, select board minutes meeting minutes I should say and uh, just to move the ice rink solar financing at the bottom of page one to the top of page two other than that everything looks fine to me second any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. motion carries and just a note on that one uh, that was a meeting with Mike McCarthy from some common was yep. present and did the PowerPoint presentation. So I will include the uh, PowerPoint slides as, as oh, good. to the actual That's great. record the we'll minutes because I think that's great. Can't really see it through the Orca video, so everybody will have a chance to see those slides. Uh, the minutes for October 21st, 2024. I'll make the motion to accept the minutes of October, of Monday, October 21st, 2024. And I second that motion with just two changes on page one, just bringing down the unapproved minutes, um, a space, and bringing the vast corridor agreement and level of insurance 2025 heading to the top of the next page. One more on the last sentence of the public comment, playing horses instead of playing. <laughs> The game playing horses. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? No. Nope. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. Round table drill. Oh, good, thank you. Well, welcome back. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Welcome back. And I think the town is doing a fine job with everything surrounding um, elections. And just there's so much going on in the town. And it's impressive what's being juggled and done. And it's wonderful. That's it. Okay. Uh, Carla? No. Anticipating my first uh, election night at the town office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See how that goes. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Rachel will be looking for workers tomorrow evening. Sorry, no bowling for you, Flo. No bowling for me tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> anything to her? Uh, no. Uh, anything in the executive session? Yes. A two-parter. I find premature. I move to find that premature public disclosure in the matter of HAR LLC zoning permit application. It placed the town of Berlin at a substantial disadvantage. Give you a second. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 And you said no. Um, I move in, I move in, I move to enter into executive session for legal under 1 VSA 313 A1E and personnel under 1 VSA 313A3. No decisions to be made. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are in executive session.